Welcome to Electron Line. Again, to understand photons a little bit better, especially when we talk about radio waves, let's do this. Let's calculate the number of photons that we receive for every square meter surface on the Earth, sunlight coming from the sun from a distance of 93 million miles away. We know that, that the intensity of sunlight reaching the Earth, not the surface of the Earth, of course, because it has to make it to the atmosphere, but at least at the top of the atmosphere, the intensity is 1,361 watts per square meter, which is 1,361 joules per second for every square meter surface on the Earth. And at least that would be in the upper atmosphere. And so how many photons of visible light in one second of sunlight on one square meter? Well, let's go ahead and figure that out. And then we'll do a, a similar calculation for radio waves coming from a broadcasting radio tower. All right. The energy for one photon is H times the frequency, which is HC over lambda, which is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times second, which is Planck's constant, and the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And then we divide that by the wavelength of visible light. And on average, it's about 500 nanometers, which is 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So what would be the energy contained within a single photon? So 6.626 e to the 34 minus times 3 e to the 8 divided by 500 e to the 9 minus equals, and it would be 3.98 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Converting that to electron volts, we divide that by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. So if we divide that by uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per electron volt, we convert that to electron volts. So divide by 1.6 e to the 19 minus, and we get 2.48 electron volts. All right, so that's the, that's the energy for a single photon of visible light. If we get this much energy every second per square meter, then how many photons is that? So the number of photons is equal to the energy per second divided by the energy per photon. And that gives us the number of photons per second because energy will cancel out and the photons will go to the numerator, seconds will go to the denominator. So energy per second is 1,361 joules and divided by energy per photon, which is 3.98 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per photon. Photon, there we go. And that will give us the number of photons. So let's see, times 1.6 e to the 19 minus, and then we, then we take the inverse of that, and we multiply that times 1,361, and that gives us a total of 3.42 times 10 to the 21 photons. So that many photons strike the Earth's atmosphere every second for every square meter. All right, now, let's say that we have a radio broadcasting station and it broadcasts at a power level of 50,000 watts. And let's say that this is a AM 640 which means that the frequency is equal to 640,000 hertz, or 640 kilohertz. That's what we mean when we talk about AM stations. All right, so let's say that that power is now equally distributed spherically in all directions. We know that's not really the case because typically radio antennas are situated in such a way that they tend to uh, have the maximum uh, radiation distribution or power distribution in a kind of a horizontal band and as you go straight up and straight down to the ground there will be less energy being directed straight up and straight down but let's just for ease of of a calculation assume that it goes equally out in all different directions so the intensity then would be equal to the power divided by the area over which it spreads and of course the power would be 50,000 watts and the area would then be the spherical area over which it spreads and let's say that the person listening is 2,000 meters away that's only two kilometers that's really really close to the antenna typically most people live much farther away from the broadcasting station so this would be 50,000 watts divided by the area, which would be 4 pi times the radius squared, and the radius would be 2,000 meter squared. So that would be the spherical region over which the energy spreads. All right, when we calculate that, what do we get? We get 50,000 divided by 4, divided by pi, and divided by 2,000 squared equals, 
and that gives us, uh, let's see here, 9.95 times 10 to the minus 4, uh, that would be um, watts per square meter. So intensity is in terms of power per unit area. And that looks like it's about 1 1,000th of a watt, so it's equal to about 1 milliwatt per square meter. So that would be the energy received at a distance of 2,000 meters away from that radio broadcasting antenna. So how many photons, if we can talk about photons of, of uh, radio waves, how many photons would that be? Well, first of all, let's find the wavelength of this radio broadcast station. So lambda would be equal to, that would be the velocity, speed of light, divided by the frequency. So that would be 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second for the speed of light, divided by the frequency of 640,000 hertz. All right, let's find out what the wavelength is. 3e to the 8 divided by 640,000 equals, that gives us a wavelength of about 469 meters. So that's uh, almost five football fields long. Those are very long wavelengths of AM broadcasting radiation. Now, let's find out the energy for a single photon. So the energy for a single photon, for one, is equal to h times the frequency. Well, since we have the frequency, we can go ahead and use that. That's 6.626 6 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. And the frequency would be 640,000 hertz. So that would be the energy of a single photon, if we can talk about photons of radio radiation. So the 6.626 e to the 34 minus times 640,000 equals, and that would be an energy of 4.24 times 10 to the minus 28 hertz. So that's a very, very, oh, not hertz, of course, radiate, that would be energy, that would be joules. So per photon, that would be a very tiny amount of energy. Now, if we get one milliwatt per square meter, which is equal to one millijoule per second per square meter, how many photons would it require to, do, to impart one millijoules of energy for every square meter of reception area there? Okay, we'll do the same thing as we had over here. Number of photons, number of photons is equal to the energy received per second per square meter divided by the energy per photon. So it would be equal to 0 0.001 joule per second divided by the energy per photon, which is 4.24 times 10 to the minus 28 joules per photon. photon. And of course, that would give us the number of photons given to a square meter of area at a distance of 2,000 meters away from that antenna. So take the inverse of this. And multiply times 0 0.001 equals. And the number of photons would be 2.36 times 10 to the 24 photons per second. Now, let's compare those two numbers. Sunlight received 3.4 times 10 to 21 photons. Radio station, 2,000 meters away from antenna, we get 2.36 times 10 to the 24 photons. That means almost 1,000 times as many photons per square meter of radio signals as we do sunlight from the sun. Wow, that's quite amazing. Even though the amount of energy deposited is so much greater, 1,361 joules per second per square meter versus one millijoule per second per square meter. There's a thousand times as many photons of radio radiation as you have photons visible light. Wow, that's quite amazing. And yet, we have to be careful talking about photons in radio broadcasting station. You get a very blurry line there because it really acts more like a wave at that, at that wavelength than as photons. But if you can just assume for a moment that it's still quantized, there'll be a whole lot of photons from that radio station. Hmm, that's quite interesting. Since the energy is so low, it becomes very blurry when we talk about radiation, radio radiation, and photons. But it's really neat 
to still compare it to get us a little bit more of an understanding of what photons are. There you can see this, the difference between sunlight and radio broadcasting.